Uh, thanks everyone for coming to this session. Uh, this is Xing from Microsoft. I have uh, Guo Han also from Microsoft uh, by way from uh, NVIDIA join me with this session about how to empower AI networking with Sonic. Um, AI networking, AI era actually increase, impose a lot of interesting challenges. Networking as a fundamental of this problem is will help to shift all giant traffic, right, to enable all the computation to be realistic. So we are in the center of this problem. And this is an exciting time. Um, I'm going to, in this talk, I'm going to first lay down the some Eastern eggs for you to think about, about this area, what uh, um, what's coming. And uh, our engineering side, Gohan, and we, by way, will help you, right, to unfold it. How do we tackle, how do we think about all these problems? So first of all, when we're looking at mm, traditional traffic versus AI traffic, there's a big difference. In the traditional public uh, uh, cloud computing, cloud networking, we have a lot of different applications. They are loosely coupled. Right, they have different tolerance about latency, jitter. They also have um, different performance requirement. That when we look at AI traffic, that's very different. They are very consolidated, simple application, very tightly coupled. They require right a very low latency, low jitter. Otherwise, um, one collective, um, the uh, if uh, is slow, the whole job will slow down. So when we look deeper into that, we have a bunch of wish list. If changing from traditional networking uh, with a lot of traffic combined to AI networking, what do we wish for? First, it's easy to understand the bandwidth. We need a lot of bandwidth to shift these data between computation external unit. However, that is not all. Deeper, if you look it deeper into it, we actually would like to have a good distribution of the of the uh, of the load balance, enable all this traffic or or enable this job collectives that to have very very symmetric. Uh, all all of them has low bandwidth, low latency, finish job quickly, right? Uniform the performance. Otherwise, if in this experiment shows without any optimization, not the traditional network to handle it, right? The jobs will be distributed, the finish time will be distributed in a wide range, long time. However, with some route um, node balance distribution, we will be able to in finish them in a short time uniformly. So that is first our uh, wish list that is to enable all this AI traffic, right? Have a better um, uh, load balance, how to find a better path. Uh, very closely to related to this is when we have other traffic together living in one network, we would love to have better isolation. So enable them, if we have unlimited bandwidth, enable them to better utilize it. Okay, this is the first area. The second area is when we're looking at the job, right? When we finish it, all failures, are, uh, failures are avoidable. Failures will happen. Now failure will create disruptions when job finishes. This is public, uh, pub, pub, public data published by Meta, right? How about uh, from their experiment, from their, um, from their paper that all sorts of failures What's the impact on the end-to-end uh, -end, um, job finish day? So the takeaway from this page is we also wish to reduce, minimize the network node failure, link failure impact on the job performance. Third, when we look at the telemetry and the visibility, when the regular job we are already reducing our monitoring, alerting uh, frequency from, from tens of minutes to minutes using streaming telemetry to second, right? When we look into AI, that's not enough. 
the collectives are all in millisecond, uh, like a scale, the granularity. When we would like to understand the behavior, the challenge, why it didn't finish on time, or how can we accelerate even further accelerate it, when we look into co collectives, it's in the millisecond, or microsecond, even microsecond, uh, 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 microsecond granularity to enable us, to enable our monitoring system to even understand better how do we uh, capture the issues. Last but not least, a lot of talk in the keynote already talked that at the end, this networking or this acceleration is not one point. It is end-to-end. -end. We have to end-to-end -end, uh, like a uh, problem set. We have to start looking not only from the switch link, from the leak, end-to-end, -end, even cross region. How do we look at this problem to solve them holistically? With that, I'm going to give to Gohan. And now I think you hear the wish list from our product manager. Now from the engineer. <laughs> so we're going to um, try to solve the problems. Um, so I think uh, we're going to talk of few problems we're seeing uh, you know, in our ne AI networks. And I think there will be more talks about other, as other aspect of those problems. So, um, so one of the things that uh, we found is a topology related. So think about if we're building a two-layer cloud network, right? So the total capacity of the network is a switch bandwidth, a switch capacity, a single switch capacity, um, power of two, then divided by the uh, number of uh, links between those uh, switches. Um, so if you take some examples, if you are using a 50, 51 terabit switch, then depending on the links between your tier one and tier two, if it's 800 gig, then the total network capacity is only about um, 1,600 terabit. However, if you are using a Skinner link, which is a 100 gig link um, between a single T1 and the T0, then the total network capacity is, uh, is around 13,000 terabyte. So there is almost eight um, increase of the total network capacity if you're using Skinner links to build this uh, wider network. Um, um, so th that's one of obviously, you know, if we want to build a large training GPU clusters, we want to build a wider network. So however, uh, if we move to this uh, Skinner link class network, so one of the challenge we have in our, uh, in our um, operating system is that you have much more ports to deal with than your traditional, um, um, you know, switches are running the DC, right? So normally you are talking about a single ASIC switch with 64 ports, but now suddenly you are talking about eight times ports, if it's 500 ports, or even with, uh, you know, um, future ASIC could be a thousand port. So this pose a lot of challenges in terms of uh, how do I scale and the, 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 the counters we are pulling for each port, and how do we even scale the BGP sessions? Because normally we're just dealing with tens of BGP sessions. Now we're dealing with hundreds of BGP sessions or even thousands of BGP sessions. So one, that's one of the challenges that we're seeing. And uh, um, so um, for our engineering, we're going to commit to work on this problem, solve the scale problem to make um, you know Sonic to be able to um, work on this, uh, um, um, this Skinner uh, link into class network. So, so second problem I'm going to talk about is uh, quality of service. So as a data center uh, network OS, when we saw it first come, so we have the um, quality of service bear in mind because in Microsoft they are running a very large RDMA network. So we have a lot of features in the day one to deal with the quality of service. However, when we move to the AI network, we still find that there is uh, improvement we need to make. The main reason because of the AI network traffic, the traffic is much bursty um, than the normal data center traffic because it's no longer TCP, it's running RDMA, the jobs, the finish time is around uh, you know, those millisecond level, so you want to finish a job. So therefore the traffic is very bursty. So in order, in this bursty environment, in order to handle better congestion control, what you really need is to get 
much faster feedback uh, in terms of network, that network is congested so that end host can react on those congestion signal. So traditionally we're using ECN, we're using PFC, or sometimes you are using packet drops to indicate whether the network is congested or not. But we found that in this AI network, uh, we need a much faster signal for the network to feed back the uh, congestion signal to the to, to the um, to the end host. So one of the things we're working on is to bring new features in this area, like packet trimming or the back to sender congestion notification. Just to give a quick example on the packet trimming, is that um, instead of uh, so you know you, you, the, the switches have a congestion, so some the buffer is overflow for, for those packet that's supposed to be dropped instead of dropping them. We trim the packet and put it into high priority queue and that packet will reach to the receiver, get back to the sender. So instead of uh, using the timeout to detect the packet loss in the network, you actually have an explicit feedback um, from the switches. So you get quicker notification. So, so this is a, this is a few improvements that we are making um, to make congestion and um, to be reacting faster in the AI network. So we actually developed the uh, size specification among the community and we're going to work on the sonic feature to enable this for the AI network. So the last one I think uh, also mentioned uh, that I'm going to talk about is, a, is the telemetry. So this is also related to the traffic burstness in, in the AI network. So the job um, it, it, it's very bursty. If you look at the the, fir the top fir uh, top figures, um, that's uh, uh, you know a traffic pattern we detect. You you see there are some dips uh, in the first wave. So so first we need to understand there is a dip in those uh, uh, in those jobs. And the traditional counters and telemetries that give you those, those metrics on the order of seconds or tens of seconds or minutes. So that's not enough for you to detect this problem. So for this particular issue we see, you know, the DPC is on order of a millisecond. So therefore, the first, the first challenge to our engineering is to first identify those issues. In order to identify those issues, we need to get those counters in high granularity. So then for this particular problem, uh, you know, we, we, we found those issues and we discovered it's because of a uh, NCCL configuration issue and we fixed that. So how, do we, how does a sonic to help on this high, um, you know, telemetry, high frequency telemetry data is that we are proposing a new sonic feature that we're working on is to, instead of uh, pulling the data from the switching ASIC, we're letting the switch ASIC to push the data through the and DMA buffer to the host OS. And then we have a very quick um, um, you know, mechanism to get those data to the application and to the outside, to then to the outside world, right? So this is a high level architecture. We are working through those proposals in the community. And we believe that with those new proposals and the features running on Sonic, we can get those telemetry and data on the order of uh, hundreds of milliseconds, which help us to debug the AI networks. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's well known that the load balancing is one of the most important issues in the AI network. And uh, it's also well known that ESMP is a flow level cost granularity, uh, you know, load balancing, right? It cannot achieve very good performance in the AI workload due, due to the low entropy of the AI traffic. So in this case, right, ESMP cannot fully utilize the network capacity. It will slow down the job. And if you have multiple jobs, your multiple job can interfere with each other. Even your network may have enough capacity. It's probably non-blocking. So you know, to address this issue, right, we need more fine-grained load balancing. Right? We need to do the load balancing in a packet level, in the flow lab level. Right? For example, in this way, right, if you do the flow uh, packet level load balancing, right, we can achieve perfect load balancing. So there are a lot of um, solution uh, proposal from industry like AR, DLB, GLB, DSF, DSFI. They all require different support from the switch. So in addition to the granularity, I want to bring your attention to another important aspect of the load balancing for AI workload. That is how to deal with asymmetric topology. Right? Even though we built 
you know, non-blocking symmetric topology, but in practice, our topology is always asymmetric due to the failures. And when failure happens, something interesting will, you know, will show up. So for example, here, right, we have a very simple two-layer two network, right? We have two sender, send traffic to two receiver. Okay, now we cut one link down. Now, if this is the traffic demand, right, we can figure out that is the optimal load balancing. But if I reduce the traffic demand from S2 to R2 a little bit, right, we will have a different ult optimal load balancing result. So the key observation here is that if we want to achieve good load balancing in asymmetric topology, which is always the case, right, we need to track both topology dynamics, but also the real-time traffic demand. That means we will need a global congestion wear load balancing which can not only track the topology, but also the real-time utilization of each path rather than any local link. So since we have talked about asymmetric top, uh, topology due to link failures, let's dig into the link failures. The figure on the left shows the sonic rocking architect you know, architecture today. So every time when there's a link down, right, it, it will take some time for the sonic to detect this bad link and then remove this bad link from the ECMP group. So this process will take some time, and this time depends on your, you know, your CPU, your routing scale. During this black period of time, the link is actually down, but you know, the switch does not do that. So the switch will still forward packets on this bad link. Then all the packet will be dropped. Your training job will be, will be hard, right? And if unfortunately, you know, this blackout period of time is very long, you probably have RDMA timeout and your Nico report error, you have network disruption, right? So we need to accelerate this process. We need to achieve fast link failover. And one potential direction is to use, you know, is to offload this like failover to the hardware. So yeah, my last topic, that is unify end-to-end -end control, right? So to achieve better resilience, it's more and more common to see that AI cluster use multi-plane network. For example, here, I show a two-plane network where every link has two core connect to an independent factory topology. So in this multi-plane network, the NIC and the DPU, they have many, many switch functionality. For example, the NIC need to figure out if I can access, if I can reach to another NIC through a given plane. The NIC also need to do the load balancing because different plane may have different network capacity due to failures, right? I need to, do, I need to do a perfect load balancing at the edge of the network. So it would be nice that if, if, if you can also run the Sonic on the end host to control such kind of switch functionality. So in summary, the networking for AI is a very, very exciting area. You know, a lot of pressure, a lot of opportunities, right? So please contribute your smart ideas to the Sonic. Let's build the best AI network using the Sonic. Thank you very much.